Jesus tonight. Come on, you guys excited that we get to be in the presence of our King. Come on, we get to do it in here as well as corporately. We want to welcome everybody from around the world that's watching to tonight. An encounter with Jesus. Every night we have gathered in this building, we have seen Jesus do many beautiful things. And tonight he's going to do it again signs, wonders, miracles, the presence of Jesus, first love, birth in our hearts. Come on, let's agree together as a family. Lord, we thank you for this evening. Jesus, you are here. You are with us tonight. Father, I pray for full attention of every heart in this room that we see you and you alone. We welcome and usher in the Holy Spirit. For this is your house, this is your building, this is your place. I pray you come and rest tonight in this building. We thank you for every miracle that's gonna take place. Every deep healing within that's gonna take place tonight. We pray your kingdom come, your will be done. Right here tonight as it is in heaven. We love you, Jesus, and we say yes to you in Jesus' name.
it is our heart's desire that we would see you rightly, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your presence even now, Lord.
death of the cross. Oh, come on, just lift your voice. It's just a bit of faith, the Lord. There is no one like him. Oh, there's no one like him.
Just close your eyes. Forget about everything. Everything and everyone. And just sing in the Spirit. We're going to sing or pray in the Spirit for the next five minutes at least. So get comfortable and let the river of God flow.
sing in the Holy Ghost. Come on.
let the instruments carry you, let the wind carry you. What are you doing? You want to learn to flow in the Holy Ghost or not? Let the wind carry you. From your innermost being will flow. From your innermost being, from inside, will flow rivers. Rivers, 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 rivers. Play that, Joel. Just keep blessing the Lord. Keep blessing the Lord. Every new move requires a fresh wind. A fresh wind. And with that wind comes a fresh sound of worship from a priestly people. I don't know what you're facing tonight, but I want you to hear the invitation. Stand as a priest of the Lord, as a kingdom of priests, and worship the Lord. Come hell or high water, worship Jesus tonight. Lift your eyes. Lift your eyes. Look up. That's how Miss Kuhlman used to sign her letters when it was a difficult prayer request. Oftentimes she just signed her letter, Look up, Catherine Kuhlman. So I don't know what you're facing tonight. Look up. Look higher than the mountains. Where does your help come from? Our help comes from the Lord. Would you take another minute and just sing in the Spirit? in my heart to pray for certain people and they're already on the ground so I'm not sure the Lord needs my help would you just give it another 30 seconds worthy is the Lord
full-time, full-time, and you've flown in from outside of the country, you've come from another country, I want you to come forward right now on our prayer team, just to quickly line up. If you've come in from a different nation, you're in the ministry, come forward. Or you're a missionary who's home, would you come forward? Sing it, keep singing. Oh Lord my God. Lord my God. Come. Yeah, come to Dion, sir. Right here, Dion. Take this man. If you've come in from out of state, you're next. You're in the ministry full time and you would like prayer. Come forward. You're a, you're in the full time ministry from out of state. You've come here for a touch from God. Come. Come. I see. I see the stars. Pick it up, guys. I hear the rolling sun. Sing it, church. When you worship, God's power flows. 
babe, you come too. Yes. Lift it, then sing to my soul. Come, Holy Spirit, touch your people. Amy, you pray for them. You pray for these two. Lily, go pray for them. Worship, worship. everyone to stretch their hands towards the people receiving prayer. Sing it softly, Jesus. Let's all agree now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let the power of the Holy Ghost come upon these people. Send them back to their state, burning. Burning. Come on, church. Burning. Go stand with Lily, baby burning in the fire of the Spirit. Let the power of the Holy Ghost come upon them. Let the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesse, you lay hands on them too, babe. Yep. Amy, step in and pray for these two as well. Father, let your divine presence rest on these people. Come on, I want to hear you pray. One person catches fire, a whole nation can change. Lord, I pray that the fire in this house would rest upon these people. That the fire on this altar would fall upon them. Hallelujah. Sing that softly, choir, how great thou art, softly. Bring me, uh, Ryan, there's a girl in an army green jacket. Bring her to me. Sing, 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 church. Bring her to me, right here. Right here. How great thou art. Stand behind her, Daniel. Stand behind her. Father, the fire of the Holy Ghost. What's your name? What is it? Akta. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost come upon Akta. In Jesus' name. It will carry the fire of the Spirit. Keep worshiping. Keep worshiping. The Lord's not done. Lift it a little. Lift it a little. my soul then sings my soul get me Candace Sarah how great thou art how great thou art right here, right here, right here, right here Lord my God, every voice, every voice. Oh Lord my God. That's it, right there. When I in awesome wonder consider all Sing church. The world's thy hands have Minister to the Lord. Touch his heart.
heart and he'll begin to move. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the So much. My so much this God week. Keep singing. Every voice. Don't even pay attention to me out there. How great Fill them tonight to overflowing. How great Fill them tonight to overflowing. A fresh a touch. A fresh anointing. Fresh Sing it, sing it, sing it. Come closer. Then sings my 
look up and begin to love him there's no time in his presence it's an honor to stand to stand in his glory oh we love you Singing, Judy. Everyone pray for Johan. Stretch your hands. Fill him tonight. Overflowing. Holy, 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 holy. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the King. Consume him with the spirit of prayer. Fire of the Spirit. True fire. True fire. Emma, would you come up here? Can I have a microphone? If I were you tonight, I would disconnect from this world and worship the Lord the whole night. Yeah, that's what I would do. Uh, Lily, you wanna come? And uh, I'll start with you guys. Why don't you come? What did the Lord, uh, we just got back from Seattle and uh, stood with our my good friend Raul, and who was my assistant for two years, and before that with Bill, 
and he just hosted his first event. We gladly went out and served that region. But God really moved among the worship team in a very holy way. <laughs> a few of them aren't available right now, so. What did the Lord do? Yeah, um, just as a team, like our prayer time before our sets were just so powerful and the Lord just came like instantly. And there was such a hunger in Seattle, um, just people that have just dug for so many years in a city that just doesn't really acknowledge Jesus. Um, and you could just sense it in the room, like it felt people just latched on to worship. But um, we had a yeah prayer time before our set last night specifically in um, I know Amy and I were just immediately hit with just the presence of the Lord and we both just started like weeping and crying out to him. Where was this? In the green room? Um, it was in the green room. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, it was like we kind of all slowly walked out on stage. We were like so just full of the Lord. And, and then after our set, we went back into the green room and just the glory fell like on all of us at the same time. And Wasn't that why Heidi was preaching? Yes. So y'all didn't even make it out there. We didn't even like hear her message, but there would be moments where we would pray over each other and she would be saying what we were praying. We would just wow. catch it. So and we she were, was in the main sanctuary. Right. You guys never made it out there. To we hear didn't. Her. <laughs> we didn't. But you could it. hear her. We could hear her. Wow. Yes. And, and you guys were praying the same thing. We would be praying the same thing. And yeah, like I know, I, I think I was like just weeping for a solid like hour and we then like hysterical laughter like broke out. Like the Holy Spirit just brought so much joy and filled us all up. I know Madeline, um, she was like laughing for so long and it was the most glorious. I've never experienced anything like that wow. in my life. Well, yeah. hey, Aaron, come up here. If we give it to Amy, we'll never recover. So. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Isn't this wonderful? What, what, what do you feel like the Lord did in you guys? We just wanted to worship Him. hungry we came, we went to meet with God and he came And now we want more. They just landed and came straight to service. Flew all day long. Led every set at the event. What, how many sets was that? Five, about five. Five sets. Each one was at least an hour and a half, I would imagine. Yeah. Longest was Scream. two. Yeah. And you came tonight because you want the Lord. Amy, come on. Why don't you come up here, Ryan? Praise you, Lord. What do you feel like the Lord did in your heart there? The Lord kept saying to me every day, there's always more. You just have to ask and you have to seek it, but there's always more. And so many people just, after an hour, they're like, I'm good. 
And he's like, I'm always here. There's always more. There's always more of him. And will you be the one to come closer? You know, while you're in your seats, I would ask the Lord for more. I would ask the Lord to touch you. There's one mindset, one spirit that I've seen as this great obstruction to life in the spirit, and it's the been there, done that. And if they can be hungry in Seattle, we can be hungry here. I don't ever want us to grow numb to what the Lord is doing here. I just need like four or five people like this out there who can pull on heaven. like the Lord did in you? Um, every day there was something new and every day there was something different. And I remember before I went, um, I felt like this would be a really life-changing trip for me. And I'm not the same person that I was before I left. And it all started on Thursday night before the session, before your session. We were in a hotel room and we gathered to pray. And I asked Jose to lay his hands on Courtenay. And the minute he did, he instantly felt the Lord. It just fell over and the whole room started weeping. Wow. And from that moment, I asked God, I need more, I just want more. I please, I just I need more. And every day, I felt closer, I felt closer and closer. And last night, just like she said, we got done with the set, and towards the end of the set, you could feel the Lord's presence on stage. And um, Mama Heidi got on the ground, and we all got on the ground with her, and we took communion. And a lot of us couldn't move off of stage. Raul sent me a picture and it said, these are your people. <laughs> we were pretty messed up. Um, we really couldn't move. So we pretty much crawled off stage to the green room. Uh, and I just got stuck to the wall. I couldn't move. And Madeline was just losing it on the floor, laughing hysterically. And the Lord came so strong and touched all of us so deeply. And I looked at Amy, because I was looking on the side of the room, and I said to you, is it just me or is there fog coming into this room? She's like, I don't know, I don't see that. I was like, okay, maybe, maybe it's just me. And two minutes later, Candace goes, does anyone see that fog coming wow. right there? And I said, wow. the Holy Spirit's in the room right now. And all of us started weeping, praying over each other. Uh, Didn't you guys smell a sweet fragrance? We smelled, it literally smelled like a burning incense fragrance. What's that? So, Amy, when I was praying over all of them, she asked me, she goes, are you chewing something? I said, no. And she goes, that's so weird. You have like an oil coming out of your mouth. It smells like a fragrance mm -hmm. coming out of your mouth. And we were laying hands on each other, and I remember, like, the Lord leaning me back, and I actually landed on Emma. Sorry. And I couldn't get up. I kept trying to get up. And I told Amy to lay hands on my stomach, and she laid hands on my stomach, and she prophesied over me. And she said she saw Jesus standing with me. That he took something off of me and put a new crown on top of my head. And from this trip, this whole trip changed me forever. 
And I have felt Lily so close to Lily just had a, a baby. <laughs> and how long have you been home, basically? Two months. Two months because of complications. And finally, she was able to go, and the Lord was waiting on her. And as you know, it's tough to be in the house by yourself. And she walked through a just a difficult season there, and the Lord lifted her. He'll do the same in you tonight. He'll do the same in you tonight. I feel like the Lord poured something into us for us to release here. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you pray? Pray, yeah. Why don't you all lift your hands and just receive? Jesus, we love you so much. We love you, we love you, we love you. Thank you. Thank you for the work that you've done in us. Oh, we want you just so desperately. Oh, Jesus, would you pour it into us this week? Would you pour out on this congregation and this church on Jesus' image right now? In the name of Jesus, a sweet fragrance, Lord. We want more and we're hungry and we'll come burning every week after week. We just want you, Lord. Let us experience your presence every day, Lord. Fresh manna every single day. Jesus, we just want to touch from you. Let the sound of heaven become our new normal, Lord. Jesus. Would you start a revival at Jesus' image unlike anything this world has ever seen? And Lord, we're so desperate. Please let it start with us. We will be the ones burning for you, Lord. We won't take any of the glory. We'll give it all to you, Lord. We'll give it all to you, Jesus. We'll give it all to you, Lord. Would you just use us, please? Would you just show us your face? We want to know yes, you more, yes, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes. Never let us be the same. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise you. Thank you, Jesus. posture I think one of the most consistent questions I get from pastors or young preachers is how to flow in the Holy Spirit in a meeting it's a good question but it's the wrong question it's in the wrong order we don't learn him in public first we learn him privately The primary reason that this sort of thing is not more common is because we, we get in the way. We get in the way. We just don't let go. The Holy Spirit cannot be figured out. You can't be figured out. And He's a person. He certainly cannot be figured out. But he can be yielded to and trusted. And in about a week, hundreds of students will be filling this uh, building on Sundays. And they'll bring a fresh fire 
because that's what sacrifice does. But I want you to walk into this room with fresh fire every time. I want you to be burning before you walk in like they are. And to have that, sacrifice is required. It just is. No sacrifice, no fire. No wood, no fire. No crucified life, no fire. That's the wood, that's the tree. When I was a little boy, I would sit in this room and lift my hands and say, Lord, touch me, don't leave me the same. I'm not sure my perspective, what I'm about to share is the healthiest, but if he didn't touch me in a tangible way, I would leave all sad. But I'd rather have that than numbness. I'd rather have that. I think I was sad all the way home for three hours. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. It's amazing to me, in a room like this, people can they can be in here and some just go through the motions. And that, but some, some pull on heaven. They press through the crowd, and grab onto the hem of that garment. You know there still is dunamis power that flows from the hem of his garment. I said there's still dunamis power that flows from the hem of his garment. Life-changing power that flows from that hem that'll dry up your issue of blood tonight, your woundedness. It's not always easy to get to Jesus in the crowd, but it's always worth it. It's not always easy. That woman, Lydia, many think that was her name, that woman with the issue of blood. She had many people to sort through, much judgment to sort through to get to the man from Galilee who was walking by. Maybe he'd never walk by that way again. I have a question to submit to you tonight. Maybe he'll never walk by you this way again. You may not have people to press through. Maybe there are issues in your heart that you need to push aside, worries and anxieties that you need to push aside tonight. Pride that needs to be repented of tonight. You say, I am not prideful. If you feel like you can leave this meeting just the same and be all right with that, that's prideful. We need Jesus every hour of the day. Every moment of every day. Hey, Ryan, I need help, friend. One, two, three, four, five. Fifth row. Young girl, blonde hair. She's hungry. Judy, majesty. I have old footage, audio footage, I should say. Bring it right here. A little softer, a little softer. Right here, right here. Sing it, church, softly. Empty hand. Fill her tonight. The power of the Holy Ghost. That's what young people need. They need the Lord. Sing it, church. Just sit there and worship. What a precious privilege. You can just sit and worship the Lord tonight. Every voice. Every voice now, Majesty.
Jesus found me just as I am. Empty handed but alive in your hands. Yeah, again. Majesty. Majesty. Maybe pray for Ryan and Carla. Forever I am changed by you. Fire of heaven fall on them. The presence of your majesty. Oh, lift it just a little though. Majesty. Majesty. Thank you for two that make the crooked path straight. Everyone worship. More worship in heaven than preaching. Preaching is so important, but it's much easier in this atmosphere. Much easier. Majesty. Every high place brought low. Crooked, crooked path made straight. Forever I am changed by your love. volume a little. Judy a little more Your grace 
children's director Lord let there be a move of God with the children come on everyone agree with me let there be a move of God with our children and anoint Esther to lead them in power and purity and in the truth of the word of God lift it just to listen to the Word of God. Do you love his presence? You don't ever have to leave him. Or leave him, I should say. Good to see you, Dan. Honored to have you here. As I was saying earlier, I have some audio of, or I've listened to audio from a man named C.H. Mason, who was William Seymour's personal assistant, who birthed the Church of God in Christ. Yeah, keep playing, keep playing, it's beautiful, Joel. As, as you know, C.H. William Seymour was the leader of the Azusa revival. And I was listening to audio from Bishop Mason of his meetings. And it was, uh, there was no manly structure to them. 
there's a teaching called that he has uh, called the blood prevail and it was like this it was a flow of the spirit and then a word and then someone would get touched and somebody would get healed and um, my heart longs for churches to live in God's presence and not confine the Lord I want to read Hebrews 12 to you I know Dave mentioned it this morning I don't turn there though we'll put it on the screen just for the sake of being sensitive to the Lord just, just listen to the word of God therefore and as you know that's the therefore is pertaining to Hebrews 11 the great hall of fame of faith Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, the cross is never fun. The cross is never fun. It's not supposed to be, and if you don't feel it, it, you don't have one. The cross is abrasive. It is rugged. It is heavy, and the Lord offers us this cross daily. It's a daily offer. What is the lifestyle of the cross? It is the lifestyle of choosing God's will every time your will and His collide. When that intersection is presented, the lifestyle is the cross, of the cross is to say, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Despising the shame, this is still verse 2, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, I want to move to verse 18 here. I want you to listen carefully. I think the Western church is so pragmatic. Everything has to make perfect sense. And the church itself has to fit uh, our structure and our minds. But I've been telling you for months, there's really only one true worship service in God's opinion. True worship services down here discover the reality and the culture of what is happening in the throne room by studying the scriptures and yielding to the spirit. And all of us have received from that, all of us. I'm certainly not the architect of it. I, I, I tell people all the time around the world when they say we watch you every whatever, I say I'm just really honored to have a parking spot and to be a really small piece of that puzzle. But when you discover there's one worship service and this is really the language here for you've not come to the mountain that may be touched and that burned with fire into blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of a trumpet speaking of Sinai and the voice of words so that those who heard it begged that the word should not be spoken to them anymore for they could not endure what was commanded and if so much as a beast touches the mountain it shall be stoned or shot with an arrow these are the Lord's commands to Moses and so terrifying was that sight that Moses said, I'm ex I am exceedingly afraid and trembling. Paul's saying, you're not coming to that sort of mountain. You're not coming to a, a natural mountain. You're not coming to Sinai when you gather. Listen to verse 22. But you have come to Mount Zion. And he's not talking about Israel. 
you've come to Mount Zion, in other words, a, a heavenly mountain. As Dave mentioned earlier, that heavenly mountain that one day will become our reality in the age to come. This heavenly mountain will collide with the earth and the Lord will rule and reign. Oh, Jesus, what a mighty God. I said, what a mighty God. Don't you dare leave the same tonight. Don't you dare see Jesus in such an improper manner that would cause you to believe that your issue is bigger than him. You've come to Mount Zion, in the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. <laughs> to the General Assembly and Church of the Firstborn who are registered in heaven. Say thank you, Jesus, for registering your people in heaven. To God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. Did you know you are literally in the presence of the Lord right now? Literally. And to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Say this out loud. Say the blood speaks. Say it again. The blood speaks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is the blood speaking? Revelation 5, 9, and 10. And they sang a new song. Saying, worthy are you to take the book do you know there's only one found worthy to take the book? I said there's only one worthy. There was great sadness in heaven, John the Revelator wrote. But there was one found worthy to take the book and break the seal and open the scroll. Just one. And he's the root of Jesse, the lion of Judah. Be of good cheer, for he has overcome. The scripture says, he has overcome. Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals. Why is he worthy? For you were slain. You see, the cross is greatness to God. Jesus has redefined greatness. In his kingdom, the most humble are the greatest. There's only one place to go in his glory, and that's low. I used to hear Heidi say it all the time. I just like to get low in his glory. And she has so many funny, cool, little, spunky sayings. But they're loaded. This morning I was worshiping. Uh, at the 10 a.m. service and I felt the Lord said get down on the ground and, and I heard that phrase get low in his presence and Jesus has defined greatness through lowliness it's always troubled me when we in our weakness in our fallen nature start to believe that without us without us God's work will discontinue. But Paul said, I, I build on no foundation, but the foundation that's already been laid, Jesus Christ. He's our chief cornerstone. And as long as Jesus is here, we're okay. I said, as long as Jesus is here, we're okay. 
as long as Jesus is with you and you sense his presence, you're okay. You carry in your heart, hopefully, the truth of the word of God. That he honors above his own name. And I wonder if we even realize how much the Father values the name of Jesus. He has given him the name above every name. For a reason. Because he endured death, even the death of the cross, Philippians teaches us. And yet the Lord has chosen to honor his word above his own name. You don't have to spend another day defeated if you don't want to. Are you hearing me tonight? Learn to shake the devil off and set your face on the face of the Lamb. And that may upset some people. Let it. I said, let it. Don't you ever be a slave to people's opinions. Listen, listen to me. When you lead a team, when you lead a team, it's not the easiest thing to lead them. They come in with dreams in their hearts and you don't want to kill those, but you know God needs to. Because that's the only way to be entrusted with them. And we always think we're way more ready to be entrusted than we really are. We always do. I used to sit in this building in the early 90s. And I used to hear some phrases that bothered me. Like this one. I have no friends under the anointing. I used to think, well, that's a little extreme. It's so true. It's so true. You can't lead by the Spirit if you're yanked on by the opinions of people. And I just wouldn't, to be honest with you, follow a leader who is yanked on by your opinions, personally. That's not a man of God. That's called a man of men and women. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking to you. The fear of the Lord demands instant obedience. And following the Lord at times can look insensitive. But Jesus walked on the Sea of Galilee and would have passed the boat right on by. Because he did not come to be led by the disciples. He was led of the Father. And part of being used by the Spirit is losing continually, progressively, thank God, the fear of man. Because in God's glory, this is not like some political agenda where you just spread it out all evenly. Do you understand what I'm saying? And you have to be more willing to hurt people than the heart of Jesus. Listen. You don't want to hurt people. But if you have to choose... Don't hurt Jesus. To be led of the Spirit is exactly that. To be led of the Spirit. And see, can I just maybe teach into some things tonight that maybe you've never heard of before? What I'm going to talk to you quickly, I'm not going to keep you long. But how many of you want to be used of the Holy Spirit more? Okay. What I'm going to share with you, unless you came to Jesus School, <laughs> this isn't a plug, you, you probably aren't going to hear much of, at least in my experience. And the only reason I'm saying this is because I know I share it occasionally with certain students, and even in that case, not all. But I will give you something tonight that I've never taught on publicly.
if you are led of the spirit you are signing up to be misunderstood the offended the judgmental who've never done it the more offended they become the more opinionated they become and if you're not careful those opinions can become shackles your ability to move because oftentimes the offended are entitled and every time we feel entitled in God's glory we distance ourselves from our destiny God owes us nothing I want you to hear me God owes me nothing if we want to talk about receiving what we uh, are owed, I, oh, I, I deserve the fire of hell and nothing more. I'm not sure how this happened, but at some point this became success, the platform. Before God ever gave me a platform, Jess will tell you there were people on the streets. And it was the same voice of the shepherd saying, pull over. Pray for that guy in the wheelchair. And this is the biblical pattern, you know. In Exodus 33, don't, don't, don't turn there. You can just trust me. It's there. You can write it down. The Bible says something about Moses regarding his tent. That Moses would take his tent and take it outside the camp, speaking of a life of intimacy with God and separation. And then eventually all of Israel would stand up, knowing Moses went to his tent, the glory of the Lord would come to his tent, and that tent became known as the tent of the Lord. Then in, in Exodus 37, God calls a man named Bezalel, the Holy Spirit is poured out on him and through the wisdom of God he builds or I should say designs and builds the tabernacle what's the point before Moses was entrusted with corporate national glory he had to be entrusted with personal presence and I remember driving I remember one time we went to get a burger downtown Jesse was on the phone She's good at that. And I pulled over downtown, and I don't like downtown. I don't like cities. I don't like parallel parking. And I like to be out in open space and just breathe a little. And there was a guy in a wheelchair. And we were on the way home, and I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit. He said, pull over, pray for him. So I did. I pulled the car over. And Jessie was on the phone, and she got off the phone. She goes, where are you going? I said, I'll be right back. I jumped out of the car. I walked up to the man. I said, what happened? He said, I haven't been able to walk in years. I said, may I pray for you? He said, I cannot believe you just walked up to me. I'm a backslidden, rejected, alcoholic, former Southern Baptist pastor. And there he is living on the street in downtown Orlando in a wheelchair. And I said, do you know the Bible says that God can heal you and wants to heal you? He said, oh, I think he does. And so I prayed for him. He got out of the wheelchair. I took the wheelchair. He walked. He started screaming. He said, I haven't been able to do this in two years. I thanked him. I didn't know what to do after. I gave him a hug and walked back to the car. When we got in the car, we drove by. Now, the last thing Jesse saw was the man in the wheelchair going down the sidewalk. When we drove by the second time, she looked out the same window and she was still on the phone, but the guy was walking. I'll never forget her face. She goes, wait, wait, what? Hold on. Put the phone down. She goes, he's walking now. I said, yeah, what do you think I've been doing? Why have you been on the phone? <laughs> Obeying the Lord. The Holy Spirit 
listen carefully, is looking for people to trust with the slightest whisper. And when you obey the slightest whisper, you're signing up without knowing for a lifetime of relationship. Now, if you want to be used of the Spirit, something comes upon you in His presence. Listen carefully. The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. The Scripture says, Now the Lord is that Spirit. For too long, the church has believed that they can use the Spirit. In fact, one of the criticisms towards charismatic camps, in some cases rightfully so, in others they are incorrect criticisms. But it's that charismatics just wield the Holy Spirit and do whatever they want. That's certainly not been my experience. I'm not saying some don't believe that. I would say probably some I've been around do and I absolutely disagree with it. It's to think that you can tell him what to do is laughable. And I would also say that it is improper and it is dangerous in his eyes to assume that we know what he wants to do while he's using someone else. It's a dangerous thing. It's not healthy. If the Holy Ghost is God, and He is, do you realize the sense you feel in the air is the presence? It's the result of the presence of God Himself. God. Not, he's not limited to a dove or a fire on an altar. We're talking about God. Are, are you hearing me? The Holy Spirit is as much God as the Son is and as much God as the Father is. He is so much the Lord, please hear me, that Jesus chose to be led by Him. Now, the fact that Jesus followed Him into the wilderness, the Bible says He was led by the Spirit, in other words, the Spirit led Him, is proof of His deity. And one of the greatest things you can learn, if you're hungry, if you really want to become his friend, is off the bat, understand, he is the Lord. It's interesting to me, when people come here, they always go, one of the markers, it's funny, because it's just us being us. But when other environments come or other movements send their students, they always leave going, they're very reverent there. Now, if you came out of a traditional background, you probably think we're crazy. Okay? Now, if you didn't, if you're a river child, <laughs> if you don't know what I'm saying, you just don't know. But you can ask Candace, there she is, and Aaron. They're river kids. They make us look like the frozen chosen. But that's not the point. What are they picking up on regarding reverence? Is an understanding on this platform that he is the Lord. He's the Lord. How many of you want a greater glory personally and corporately? I do. I don't know about you. But there's some mountains I need to see move. And without him taking the field, they're probably not going to move. But you have to understand that with a greater glory comes a greater standard. Bob Gladstone said, and, and during the, the, the Pensacola revival, that the glory of God is much like nuclear power. When, when experienced properly, it brings light and power and blesses a city. But you cross the line with it, and all of a sudden it can take you out. And this is the scriptural pattern. We see this with Peter and Ananias and Sapphira. They lie to him. They hold money back. And 
Peter's answer is incredible. I want you to, I want you to understand this. this. Well, I guess this is to scare you. <laughs> I was going to say this isn't meant to scare you. But I think we all need to, to be a little afraid of the Lord. In fact, a lot of afraid. Not, not to run from him, of course, but be so afraid of our natural ability that we run to the Lord and hold on. And realize that without him we have no life, we have no purity, we have no holiness. It's all in Jesus. But Ananias and Sapphira speak to Peter in God's presence. And right before they die, Peter says, you have not lied to men, but to God. Was Peter saying he was the Lord? No. What he was saying is, in this atmosphere, the Lord is here. And he hears every word. I think if I could leave you with anything tonight regarding a life in the Spirit, it would be to understand this foundational necessity that He is the Lord. And it's why we don't play with Him. It's why we walk tenderly in His presence, step by step, precept upon precept, with each step having no clue what we're doing. Which is part of his plan. This is the invitation into a surrendered life. It's losing the clue. Understanding that he is the wind of heaven. That he carries us and that he blows in the direction he wants with the speed he wants to blow, toward who he wants to blow upon. God might touch someone tonight you don't think should be touched. And God may touch somebody in your life that you think is less hungry than you. But I, I want to say something. The Lord, the Lord keeps the books. And he keeps very organized books whenever I feel like I'm wronged misunderstood lied about in my heart I hear the word of God he was led as a lamb to the slaughter as a sheep before his shears is silent and I hear my father-in-law's advice to me when I was a young man God keeps the books Mikey God keeps the books and he keeps very good books do you realize one day those books are going to open? Are you hearing me tonight? Those books are going to open. And before all of heaven, the innocent will be found innocent. The deceitful will be found deceitful. Those who look the part but are not the part will be revealed as chaff. And those who are truly his will be revealed as wheat. This is something very glorious. But if you want to walk in the Spirit, two things I want you to grab tonight. Number one, He is the Lord. He calls the shots. He calls the shots. We don't chuck Him out of our hand like Avengers, like these superheroes, and mess with His power. No, we don't do that. It's grievous. And number two, number two, understand this about Him. To properly walk with him is to fear him. And that doesn't mean you're going to be sad. In fact, you're going to be filled with more joy. Because Jesus feared God and he was anointed above his fellows. He hated iniquity. And he was anointed with the oil of gladness, even above his fellows. So you can walk in amazing joy and know him and fear him. May I have my iPad? Where is it? I want to read this to you. Then I'm going to pray with you. See what the Lord does. I'm going to read this through this verse in Revelation. Revelation 5, 9, and 10. You can write that down. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals, for you were slain and purchased for God 
with your blood men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God and they will reign upon the earth. Number one, you need to know this tonight about the work of the blood that's available for you tonight. Number one, the blood purchases us. Aren't you glad you don't own you? Is anybody here glad they do not own themselves tonight? I don't know about you, but I don't want to own me. I would be a very difficult project. I have no interest in owning me. I would, would, would wear myself out, and I've done it many times. Number two, we are a kingdom. We are a kingdom. God has purchased us as a kingdom. We are his people. We are those in whom the king dwells and in those whom the king surrounds and protects and those whom the king governs. Number three, we are priests. The blood has made us priests. Why is that important? Because on a night like tonight, I'm sure many of you are facing so much, but you can lift your song. Listen. And when you lift your song, why don't you just close your eyes right now? Close your eyes, just begin worshiping the Lord. I'm going to talk to you. Just begin to bless Him. When you lift your song, you touch His heart. And when you touch His heart, He begins to move. And when you touch His heart, He begins to speak. And when you minister to the Lord, all that can be shaken is shaken until only He remains. The blood speaks. I said the blood speaks. The blood speaks. It speaks a better word. It speaks a better word over you tonight. If you'll come to Jesus, the word over your life won't be porn addict anymore. It'll be son. If you come to Jesus, the word over your life won't be fearful one. It'll be the one anointed by the Holy Spirit who lifts his mouth in boldness or her mouth in boldness. Come to Jesus tonight. You won't be the sick one. Come to the healer. Come to him who shed his blood that speaks. Speaks a better word. 1 Corinthians 5, 7 calls Jesus Christ, our Passover lamb. The one who shed his blood, placed it on the two doorposts and the lintel of our heart and our lives. With every head bowed and eye closed tonight, please hear me. The accuser speaks. The accuser accuses. That's what he is. The accuser of the brethren. If you stood tonight before the Lord, seriously, this is a very serious question. If you stood before the Lord tonight, if tonight were your last night here on earth, and it could be, I have a friend named Reinhard Bonnke who's gone on to be with the Lord. And the Lord told him to minister the gospel to a young man, and he didn't that night, and that man died in a car accident that night. And he made a promise the next time you tell me from now on to minister the gospel, I will. Tomorrow's not promised to any of us. If you were to breathe your last tonight, and I know that sounds so impossible, but I lost three friends last month. All three knew Jesus. Joy Dawson, Benny Johnson and another dear friend. I know for sure Joy and Benny are praying through some stuff up there. I said that to Bill. I said, yeah, I'm sure they're praying. He goes, oh, I'm sure they're plotting some good stuff. But if you were to stand before the Lord, what would speak? What would speak? your own accomplishment, your church attendance. 
Or would the blood of Jesus speak on your behalf? And have you come under the lordship of Jesus so that you, like the Israelites, as the Lord commanded them, want to anoint your doors with blood in the shape of the cross, be sure to stay in the house and eat the lamb. So the same lamb that bled to wash the sin away is the same lamb God wanted them to feast upon. That's the Christian life. Staying in the house means stay under the lordship of Jesus. Don't go out. I want to speak to people who've been in and out tonight. One foot in church, one foot in Jesus, one foot in the world. That's not the Christian life. That's a lukewarm life. And the lukewarm life is vomited. Vomited out, the scripture says. And Jesus is the type of lover since he bled and died and gave his all. He's the type of lover who expects all. And if you come to Jesus tonight and choose him, Choose to follow him because he first chose you. You respond to this love that's proven in blood. His blood will speak a better word. You don't want your own to speak. Your blood speaks guilty. Your blood speaks judgment. His blood speaks son. His blood speaks daughter. His blood speaks righteous. His blood speaks justified. His blood speaks redeemed. His blood speaks they are mine. His blood speaks they are blessed saints of God. That's what the blood of Jesus speaks. A better word than Abel. And tonight you sit there in God's presence. I want you to understand that God is reaching out to you with every head bowed and eye closed. You say, Michael, I, I want the blood of Jesus to cover my life, to cover my sin to cover my brokenness, to cover my lukewarmness, to cover my cold heart, to cover whatever, whatever, across the board, I want you to lift your hand. You say, Michael, I, that's what I want tonight. I'd like everyone to stand. Now, you're not going to be able to come forward because these people are being touched by the Lord, and I want to give them the space they need because it's very, very important. If you raised your hand or you wish you did, I want you to get into the aisles right now. Get into the aisles. All who raise their hand or wish they did. Maybe it's your first start with Jesus. Or maybe you need a second start. Maybe it's your 100th start. Get into the aisles. Just take a step of faith. Come all the way forward as far as you can. I want you to actually take a step. Give the Lord praise, guys. This is beautiful. Come, come on down. Yeah, and just stop them right where Ryan is. Let them come all the way down right about there. And then once you come, yeah, guys, give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. She can come forward. There's a little room here. Yeah, help them forward there. Thank you, Lord. Come on over here, guys. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the blood, Lord. Those of you who came in the aisle over here, yeah, you can stay there if you like. That's okay. If you want to come forward, you can. We do have some room here. It's up to you. Totally your call. I want us all to pray, and I want our team right here to begin praying for these, these sweet people here. And again, right here, guys, let's take this front row. Jazz, you as well. Just start praying, praying for this group. Nathan and Kathleen, you want to help? Just maybe go over there, see if you can. Yeah, 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 this row's great. Sharon, you as well. Dan, you're welcome to go. John, you too. You can help as well. Just get a hand on their shoulder while I'm praying for them. Can we all lift our hands and just begin thanking the Lord? Come on. All who came forward and all, all who can hear me. I just want us all to pray this out loud. Heavenly Father, I confess my sin to you this evening. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Cleanse me with the holy blood of Jesus. That speaks a better word. This is what I want. I want your declaration over me. Not the enemies. Not my own. Cleanse me tonight. I renounce the world. 
I renounce the devil. I even renounce my own will. And I lay my will down tonight and put all my trust in Jesus Christ and him crucified. Jesus is Lord. Jesus died on the cross, was buried, and is raised from the dead. Jesus Christ has ascended and is returning again. And because of his perfection and his lordship, tonight, Lord Jesus, I gladly lay my life down at your holy feet. Receive my life. Take my life as I receive you gladly. I repent tonight. Cover me in the blood. Wash me in your holy blood. And fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I want us all for the next minute to pray in the spirit. And I, wanna, I want you all praying in your hearts while you pray in the spirit that the Lord would cover and fill these people right now with the power of the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. Go ahead. Father, fill them tonight with your Holy Spirit. Fill the entire room, fill the entire church with your Holy Spirit. Each and every person, fill Fill them. Fill them. Fill them. Fill them. Pray, pray, pray a lot, pray a lot. Thank you for the fire of the living God. Thank you for the fire of the living God. Fill them. Fill them, fill them, fill them, fill them. Fill them. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Babe, pray for Joe, would you? Lord, let your glory rest upon Joe in Jesus' name. Let your glory rest upon her. Touch her deeply tonight. Touch her deeply tonight in Jesus' name. Holy, 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 worthy, 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 worthy. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you came tonight because you need a physical healing? Would you just raise both hands? Okay. Not too many of you. That's a good thing. It's a good thing. Thank you, Lord. Can we thank the Lord for that? That's, that's a, a wonderful thing. Now, if you've, if you've come and you need a healing, I, want, I told you this morning, we would pray for you. So what I need is I need help getting the team up and all who are under the Lord's touch here. So I need like, Joe, could you help? Let's get them up. And make sure there's two people on each person helping. I'm a salty veteran catcher. How to catch. They can just sit right there on the front row. Yeah, touch them all, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't this wonderful to see people being touched by the Lord? Thank you, Lord. Yeah, just sit seated right there. If you need a physical healing before I dismiss, I'd like our I would like our team to come forward. You know, I've discovered that if you don't give away what the Lord has given you, it'll die here. And I don't ever want this to die, not even after I'm gone to be in heaven. So our team, would you come forward? And all of you who've, who need a physical healing, we want to invite you forward first. So I know there's some people in the aisles. If you could get back to your seats, if you're in the aisle, if you're able. And let's make room for those who need 
a physical healing from the Lord. But I don't want you guys to start praying yet. Just come forward. Team, would you line up, please? Ushers, help me out. Okay, these are for those who need a physical healing. Now listen carefully, listen carefully. You come up, yes, to receive prayer, but make sure your awareness is on Jesus. And you don't want to leave with a touch from Jesus' image. You want to leave with a touch from the Lord himself. Remember the word of God that is sure, that is by his stripes, we are healed. Once the people who've received prayer for healing are through, and you would like prayer tonight, let's just say you're hungry for God, or there's another issue, we want to honor that. We want you leaving with a true touch from the Lord, and this, that's, this is why our team is here. We are here to serve you. Amen? So I'm going to pray over you, but remember, if you need prayer of any kind, you can stay back. Once those who've received phys- need for physical healing are through, you come forward. Lift your hands to heaven. Father, thank you for your power. Thank you for your presence. Let your glory touch your people. Let your power rest upon them. And let us love you like we could never dream. And let your fire rest upon these people as they go. I thank you for a week filled with God's holy presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We'll see you next Sunday. We love you so much. Oh, I didn't receive the offering. Don't leave. (laughs) This is an expensive building. Okay. (laughs) Can you believe people accuse me of being a money preacher? I literally forgot the offering. There's my proof. All right. Quickly, quickly, grab your seat. Grab your seat. Or come on, let's let's make up for my mistake here. And let's let's give to the Lord. We have so many needs. We are building a building. We need to pay for this building. So I want to invite all of you to give what? If they came down, they can yeah, give. They stay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Stay if you came down. <laughs> Babe, you work it out. Okay. I worked hard tonight. You, you steer the traffic. Okay. All right. Yeah, so if you already came down, you can stay there. Um, you can put your offering in the buckets if that's how you want to give. If you need an envelope, just lift your hands and keep them up high. One of our ushers will come and give it to you. If you're watching online, you are welcome to give the numbers on your screen. If you are in the room, you can scan the QR code or text GIVE to the number on the screen in the room. And if you're watching online, did you already address that? I did, but Yeah, you so can make get. up for my mistake. <laughs> A few people left, so let's be generous tonight. Thank you, Lord.
you'll know that a Jesus movement is upon us when people start coming for the sake of Jesus. And we'll know that a Jesus movement is upon us when we're more aware of Jesus than the movement. There's only salvation in Jesus. Says here, I have determined to know nothing except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Nothing this world has to offer will ever satisfy your soul. Only Jesus will satisfy your soul. Jesus is so real. He's so near. the hero. He's the hero. Jesus is the hero. I'm Michael and Jess here. We are standing on the exact location where the headquarters for Jesus Image will be. Local church, Jesus school, a uh, house of Bethany, all of that will be located right here. In fact, in the exact spot where Jesse and I are standing will be the beautiful pond in front of the sanctuary where we will most likely be holding baptism services occasionally. So we're so excited. We're right here in Seminole County off of Lake Mary Boulevard. We own this land. God owns this land, I should say. And the building will be right behind us. The sanctuary, the admin building, and the prayer house and so listen, we just wanna say thank you so much. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for giving. Thank you for praying. Thank you for being so patient and believing with us. We're believing God that the nations will descend on this property, that they will worship Jesus, that the sick will be healed here, that the lost will be saved, that the presence and glory of God will rest here. We want that, we believe this is holy ground and that the tangible glory of Jesus will be right here on this land. And so we wanna invite you to come and invite you to be a part of what God is gonna do here. Yeah, we are just so very thankful for you. Thank you so much for your prayers and your love and support. We are truly blown away with what the Lord is doing and we cannot wait to have you here with us one day. Yeah, and we're really excited about what we're gonna show you right now. We wanna take you on a journey and show you the incredible design, detail, and vision of what will take place on this property. Our Jesus Image home will be located in the beautiful Seminole County, right off of Lake Mary Boulevard. This is a thriving area filled with families, restaurants, and the beautiful amenities that this area provides. The vision of this property is simple. We want the presence of Jesus Christ to be known. We have a deep value for experiencing the Lord in His beauty and the majesty of His creation. This facility will host our local church family, Jesus School, which is our discipleship training program, yearly conferences, the Bethany House of Prayer, and it will also be an outreach hub for the state and nation. There is vision behind everything. The location of the buildings, the landscaping, the water features, and of course the architectural design of the buildings themselves all speak to the beauty of the Lord. We want all who enter the property to feel as though they've entered into the peace of the presence of God. With all the stress and turmoil that people face on a daily basis, this will be a place of serenity, worship, reflection, and adoration. Rather than this feeling like a headquarters, we want this to be the house of God and a home for His people. You will notice that the structures themselves have a timeless look and design. From the stonework to the stained glass, it will feel like the house of God. The gospel will be declared from every side of the property in multiple different ways. As you pull into the new Jesus Image home, you will discover a massive parking area that will be framed by and filled with beautiful shrubbery and trees. There will be plenty of room for you and your family. A beautiful drive leads you to the sanctuary building. You will enter through a stone archway 
Upon the archway, one of the foundational verses for Jesus' image will be inscribed. This verse carries the heartbeat of our lives and the construction of this house. Only one thing is needed, Luke 10, 42. Upon entering the front door to the main building, you will see a massive gathering area. It is a two-story structure. The first level will be filled with life. This will be a place to congregate with friends and family, to get your children checked into children's church, to eat, or simply enjoy a coffee around a beautiful fireplace. The first level will also house the youth room. We have a major focus on seeing this next generation love Jesus. The youth room will seat approximately 500 people. This room will also serve as the second year facility for Jesus School. Our children's rooms will be located on the first level. This will be a convenient experience for children and parents upon their arrival. Our children will receive amazing Bible teaching, a worship experience, and knowledge of the presence of the Holy Spirit for themselves. The second level of the main building will facilitate working spaces for our board of directors, our staff, and interns. This will be a great blessing for us as we move forward in wisdom as a ministry. As you know, God has graced Jesus' image with a massive reach through media. Thousands have come to Jesus, and so many have been healed and set free through our media ministry. We will have our very own production studio where we can create content and continue to stream live to the nations. We will release podcasts, social media content, videos, and much more. Multiplied millions have watched our media content, and we believe our creative team will flourish in this new space as they step out into this vital and anointed calling. As you walk across the main gathering space, you will discover the sanctuary. What an amazing space this will be. While we will have state-of-the-art technology in the sanctuary, the space will take you back in time, a time when churches had a sacred feel to them. You will discover beautiful stained glass behind the platform. Stained glass will line the sides of the sanctuary as well, all telling the gospel story of Jesus. There will be timeless wood beaming and stonework throughout. We long for his presence to fill this place, and it will be a home for you as well. We will seat approximately 1,500 people, yet it will not lose the personal feel that we so deeply value. The platform will be spacious with plenty of room for ministry, our worship teams, and of course, a baptismal. You will notice a round stained glass image on the back wall of the sanctuary depicting a dove in fire descending in the room. May the Holy Spirit fill our hearts each time we gather as a church family. The sanctuary space will also serve Jesus School. This will house our hundreds of first year students as well as our general school sessions. These students will be missionaries to the nations of the world and to their generation. The gospel will be declared from this sanctuary space multiple times per week and people will be raised up from this place to share Jesus with the world. And may millions be saved, healed, and touched by the Holy Spirit. Lastly, for our favorite space in the property, the Bethany House of Prayer. This will be the prayer house for Jesus' image. It will be a place for adoration, silent prayer, reflecting upon the scriptures, and worship. You will notice that the house will be built upon a pond. The setting will be quaint and breathtaking. Stone and wood mark the space with warmth and a traditional look that we believe will transcend generations. We believe this will be the hub of the entire property, a place where intimacy with God and pure prayer ascend before Him. It is named Bethany House because Bethany was the place where Jesus was loved deeply. Therefore, He rested there. Mary found the better part, and it is our prayer that all who enter will find Jesus there and fall in love with Him. May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May he be adored and worshiped on this property. May his word be taught with clarity, boldness, and love. May his gospel flood the nations, and may the generations to come find him here. Will you stand with us? Will you pray and give toward this vision? Will you give sacrificially for the sake of Jesus and his gospel? 
Will you be a part of something that will outlive you for the sake of eternity? Thank you. We love you. Jesus is beautiful.